Look what was just spotted inside Hillary Clinton's little farmhouse in New York that proves one thing. Equality, socialism, higher taxes for the top 1% and free stuff for everybody were all mantras of the Clinton 2.0 presidential campaign. Given, I'm loosely translating a couple of those, but I'm trying to cut through some of the crap for you and tell you what she was really about. Many of those things sound great, I mean we'd all like to pay a little less in taxes, and it seems like those who have it all should pay more. But for all the rich people bashing and talk of evil big business, the Clintons do pretty well for themselves. I guess in their book you're only smart if you make your millions off the hard work of the taxpayers, not actually running your own business. The Clintons have flaunted their wealth in a few different ways, but a closer look at some of their real estate should give you a pretty good look at what you and I have bought the former first family. As much as they try to make it sound like they're just a normal American family that wants to work as public servants, they sure do like their fancy pads. Here are a few details about their little farmhouse in New York. Via Patriot Beacon During her failed presidential campaign, Hillary Clinton claimed to be an every woman who had a little farmhouse in New York. Clinton's farmhouse is anything but modest as she tries to portray it to be. I will sometimes work on the book, for a couple of hours. I have a little writing area in the attic of our little farmhouse. We live about 50 minutes north of here, Clinton recently said, according to conservative fighters. In reality, this little farmhouse is a five-bedroom, $1.7 million mansion that is equipped with four baths, an in-ground pool and 5,232 square feet of living space. It is located in Westchester County, one of the most expensive communities in the U.S. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I'd consider upwards of 5,000 square feet to be little. I take that back, I am sure, and I don't. And as if that wasn't enough, they've also acquired the house next door. I guess they can't risk just any old riffraff moving in next to their family of American royalty. In their defense though, it was worth much less than their other homes, coming in at only $1.1 million. Pocket change, no? I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I'd consider upwards of 5,000 square feet to be little. I take that back, I am sure, and I don't. And as if that wasn't enough, they've also acquired the house next door. I guess they can't risk just any old riffraff moving in next to their family of American royalty. In their defense though, it was worth much less than their other homes, coming in at only $1.1 million. Pocket change, no? Since Bill and Hillary Clinton left the White House in 2001, they have turned political fame into a personal fortune, raking in more than $240 million, according to a Forbes analysis of 15 years of their tax returns. Bill made most of the money, earning $189 million by writing books, giving speeches, consulting private companies and advising billionaire Ron Burkle. Days after his presidency ended, he earned $125,000 for a speech at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter & Company in New York, according to a financial disclosure form Hillary filed as a senator in 2002. It was the first of hundreds of paid speeches that collectively made him an estimated $106 million over 15 years. In 2004 he published his best-selling memoir My Life, one of the former president's four titles. Clinton earned an estimated $38 million as an author from 2001 to 2015. In addition to the high-profile books and speaking gigs, he quietly earned several million dollars offering consulting to private companies. He made $15 million advising billionaire Ron Burkle's investment firm Ukaipa and another $24 million consulting for profit education companies Laureate Education and GMS Education. Although Hillary's earnings lagged during her years in the Senate, 2109, and President Obama's cabinet, 2009-13, she quickly made up for a lost time after leaving public office. She earned $9 million in speaking fees in both 2013 and 2014. In 2007, the last time Hillary was gearing up for a presidential race, she earned only $123,000 as an author and nothing as a speaker. But in 2015, she made $1 million from speaking and $3 million from writing. 
Her book Hard Choices was released in June 2014, perfect timing for the election season. Its publisher, Simon & Schuster, paid her $12 million from 2013 to 2015. Meanwhile, Bill has slowed down. In 2007, the year Hillary fought Barack Obama for the Democratic nomination, Bill was traveling to places like Norway, Korea, and Germany, earning $9 million from speaking engagements. In 2015, he was far more grounded, earning roughly half as much as a speaker. His book payments have sputtered out as well, declining from $4 million in 2007 to just $29,000 in 2015. I think I'm in the wrong profession, apparently, crooked politician is the card to choose in the game of life. We haven't even talked about the Clintons' fantastic DC home or its tidy worth of $2.8 million. So what can we learn from this? Well, it turns out that this self-proclaimed champion for the people, great equalizer of the wealth and advocate for even distribution likes to distribute the bulk of the money she comes across to herself. Not that you needed any more proof that Mrs. Clinton was lying through her teeth every single time she utters a word, but here is a great visual aid with public records and gates across the driveway. driveway.